And welcome to another episode of Closers. I am your closer, the DA, David Ardsma, and this is our resident loser, James Kulidianos. James, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I, I kind of don't like the fact that I'm a loser every week just because I wasn't a closer. So, But otherwise, I'm doing just fine. Hey, if you've closed games in the Greek League, I will allow you to be a closer. Have you, clo- have you closed the game? Well, I closed the game because I always went complete game. I'll give you that. Dude. Hey, at the end of the day, starters and closers, it, it's, it doesn't matter. If you're shaking hands at the end of the day, you're closing out those ball games. Uh, I'll give you that. Nah, baby. I got more CGs than anybody in the major leagues right now. Hell yeah. Uh, you and Blake Snell. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but we, speaking of Blake Snell, I'm surprised he probably wasn't at this. Uh, if you've been living under a rock, you haven't heard of this. Uh, the Fanatics best in new york city james my man went to this um you see it all over social media everybody's talking about it. i mean they were pumping it big time i think all the sports were pumping this thing big time james you went how was the fanatics fest so it was a three-day event i got to go to the second day it was friday saturday sunday i got to go saturday i brought my uh, stepson francis he had a great time i had a wonderful time and it was so cool there were so many interactive things that you could do they had an nhl booth where you could pretend to be Sidney crosby when he was a kid and take up take try to shoot the puck into a a laundry machine uh you got to do a 40 yard dash in the nfl booth there was a tops booth where you can buy exclusive baseball cards that were only made for the event i tried so hard to win those travis scott uh, limited edition tops cards unfortunately i didn't get any of them but the really cool thing is they were giving out some free cards uh, every time you bought a box of Topps Chrome. Believe it or not, I actually sold one of them the day of. I put it on eBay that night and somebody offered me 20 bucks immediately for the Fanatics Fest New York City uh, Jason Dominguez card. So I sold that. I've got a, a few left um, that I'm going to keep. But it was just such an enjoyable event. It was really funny because if you were going over there to buy any cards that were ungraded, you weren't going to get any of them. I mean, there were very, very few cards that were ungraded. And there were cards there that were $100,000, $15,000 all over the place. But my stepson wanted one card in particular. He wanted to be like his old man. And he wanted the infamous 1989 Billy Ripken Fleer error card. Error card. Yes, error card. Where I don't know who nobody. Do we know who? Has anybody stepped up and said they wrote it? I'm sure somebody stepped up, but I don't know off the top of my head who it is. So um, the, on the end of the bat, on the knob, somebody wrote um, F face. face. Yeah. Yeah, fuck face. Straight up on there. And uh, they put it on the card. One of the most famous cards in baseball, baseball card history. Uh, one of the, the Probably the most famous error card. Yeah, I think so. I don't even call it an error card. I don't even like calling it an error card because it wasn't necessarily an error. It was what an error card to me is like they put the wrong person on the card. Yeah, like Frank Thomas's 1990 tops when they forgot to put his name on the bottom. That's an error card. But I I know what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, I think that that one's pretty cool. And of course, anytime you go to a festival or a convention like this it's going to cost you a fortune which it cost me a fortune but that's because the kids always want something that they can't have normally so we went around looking at every booth trying to find one of these billy ripkin cards and we got to the last row of booths and nobody had it and finally out of the corner of his eye francis sees a gem mint 10 billy ripkin error card I walk up to the guy and ask him, how much do you want for it? $550. Ooh. So I look at Francis and I say, Francis, I love you, but I'm not spending $550 on a baseball card today. But I told him, I promise you that by the end of the day, either we'll find one over here or I'll go on eBay and I'll purchase a lesser grade for you. Because of course, He sees that I have an eight and a half grade Billy Ripken card in my collection, so he wants it. Well, we walk to another booth and there's a 9.5. And they want 500 for the 9.5. We weren't going to get that. Finally, 
Francis sees these little Simpsons cards. He's all happy because he's a big Simpsons fan now because of me. Yes. And we got a whole binder of Simpsons cards from 1990. It was awesome. We paid 60 bucks. So between the 60 bucks that we paid for that and then the two boxes of Chrome that I got for him, the exclusive ones that were $50 each, and then a Shohei Otani Father's Day patch card, you spent quite a bit of money. So we're about to leave. Excuse me. I spent quite a bit of money. Yes, yes. Uh, I gave him a $100 limit for the day, but we blew way past that. Well, we're about to leave, and then we see one last Billy Ripken card, and it's graded a 9. I asked the guy how much he wants for it. He said, I want 150. I said, is that the best you can do? It's like, I'll give it to you for 140. Well, Francis got his Billy Ripken error card for 140 bucks. So he's got a graded nine and I have a graded 8.5. <laughs> You're going to switch them out? No, I tried. And Francis is like, no, this one's mine. To me, I'm never selling these cards. I just think they're cool. So, you know, let them have the, the Billy Ripken card. Um, so that was a lot of fun. We had a great time at Fanatics Fest. Uh, what was really interesting, though, is some of the exhibits. You go to the NFL exhibit, and they had every Super Bowl ring that they could find. I don't know if it was each and every one, but there were Super Bowl rings up the yin-yang. And we even got to take a picture with the Lombardi Trophy, which was really awesome. Which is really neat. I'm sure for, for him, for Francis, I'm sure he was like, what? This is incredible getting to see this thing. And, yeah. and that's one that is, okay, quick question. Is the, is the Lombardi Trophy the most famous trophy in all of sports? No, not even close. No. There's only not one. The There's Stanley one. Cup. My, my, my boys asked me that, and I was like, no, it's not even close. Like, the history behind the Stanley Cup, it doesn't even come, doesn't even match, like, the beginning of the Lombardi Trophy stuff. Yeah, and it's not like they take the Lombardi Trophy from, you know, each player gets it and goes to their hometown with it like they do in the NHL. That's just the coolest part of what they do with the Stanley Cup. Yeah, and the Stanley Cup is, like, there's one. Like, it's it doesn't get recreated every year. Yeah, they'll add a ring and do all that stuff, but they keep the rings, you know, in the Hall of Fame. And uh, have I ever told you I got to kiss the Stanley Cup? No, of course you did. Yeah, <laughs> I got to kiss it. My dad and I together, like, <laughs> we were in a room. We were in Colorado after the Avalanche had won it, and um, he had gotten something. I don't know how he did it, but we're in the room of the Stanley Cup. We were a little late, so they were shutting down. Everything was closed, and they were like, kind of, like, packing everything up, and we're just – we're hanging out with it. He's like, hey, I got to run really quick. They're like the photographer and security guard went to go do something. And we're literally just standing there. And I remember my dad and I just looked at each other and we both immediately went and kissed it and like picked it up. And like the first thing we did, we, we didn't even think twice. Like we're getting kicked out. We're going to jail. But we're going to go jail with a story. Uh, and that was like one of the coolest things ever. We have pictures. I don't know where they are, but my dad and I have pictures of it. But the Lombardi Trophy, I would say, is definitely like second best. And it's so cool. It's iconic. I would say this. It, it's just iconic the way it looks. Uh, but speaking of the NFL, this is one of those things that is coming up. We love it. I know you love it. I love it. You got me on the hard knocks. Um, back, you got me back in to the hard knocks thing. And I've been watching the, the Chicago Bears hard knocks. I am all in on the Chicago Bears now. I love them. We're winning the Super Bowl. We're going, Daddy. We're going to this thing. Um, but we are going to give you our picks for who is going to go to the Super Bowl. Obviously, you heard mine, the Chicago Bears. That's not, not real. That's um, not but, I, but the problem is, as I show, you start buying into the hype. You start buying into the stories. You're like, dude, like I'm a man. I'm feeling it. Um, man, but Hard Knocks is so good at what they do. They could make you believe that the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Pittsburgh Steelers, anybody from Pittsburgh, who they're all garbage right now, can actually win a championship. They're that good. Pirates aren't that garbage. Okay, but, but they're not going to win a World Series not, this year. Not this year. Not this year. I don't think they're going to win it this year. But, so Mr. James, where do you want to start? How do you want to start this? So we're going to give you our division winners, and we're going to give you some wild card picks, and then we're going to, who's going to go to the Super Bowl from each side? Is that the deal here? Yeah. Okay. So we'll start. We'll start here. Uh, we'll start the AFC because that's the best conference um, there is by far so we're gonna go afc north we're gonna go um right to you james who do you have afc north and do not break jd's heart or i will slap you or he will punch you right in the knife <laughs> now i'm a big joe burrow fan so i'm going with the cincinnati Bengals. i think they have what it takes to you know at least win the division i don't know if they're gonna make it to the super bowl but they're a damn good team so i'm gonna take the Bengals in that division 
Um, this is actually going to be a really interesting division. And that's the thing. is It's going to get overlooked a little bit because you're going to talk about the Bengals and the Ravens. That's going to get a lot of talk. But the Browns have a really good defense. And the Browns, you know, they are scrappy offense. They will figure out some things. The Steelers have to figure their whole world out. Who's going to be quarterback? I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, I'm going to have to go with the Bengals. I actually do. Th- I think, I mean, when you're looking at, like, the, the premier teams in the AFC, if Joe Burrows is healthy, he's going to be on that premier list no matter yeah. what. So I have to go the the Bengals as well. I do think the Ravens, though, it's going to be really close. And if they don't win the division and the Ravens do, it's going to be by like a game, right? Yeah. It's going to be like who had the series split. I don't know. It's one I mean, is it safe to say that er, that both of us right now are going to say that the Ravens are going to win a wild card? It's going to be yeah. both of those teams are going to, this, uh, to the playoffs. Both of them. And I, yeah, I've written them both down. I, I completely agree with you. And I think Ravens will probably... Um, it's no spoiler alert here, but I think the Ravens will have the number one wild card team. Let's go here. Let's go to the AFC East. <laughs> Your yeah. division. Dude, I'm sorry. It's got to happen eventually. This is the year. There's a little bit of turmoil in Buffalo. You know, the Dolphins are good. They're not great. I, Aaron Rodgers, a Aaron, you're going to bring me to the promised land this year. AFC East Championships. Well, okay. The, the most important question is who is the Jets' backup quarterback? Uh, Tyrod Taylor. Oh, he's still playing football. Jesus. Listen, Good it doesn't him. matter because if Aaron Rodgers gets hurt again, it doesn't matter. It's in the garbage. But Aaron's going to do it this year. He's going to stay healthy the whole year. That was a freak injury. It, it, it's the Jets' season. I do think this. I do think the Jets are going to be solid. Uh, again, the rest of the division, the Dolphins and Patriots, it's going to be really top-heavy. Those top three Patriots are picked to be like the worst team in the NFL. So I'm going to ha- – I do. I got to pick the Bills. I think at the end of the day, they've been there, done that. They know how to win. They'll still win the division, but it's going to be close. Um, I'm actually going to pick the Jets to make the playoffs, but I have the Bills to win okay. that division. Um, now we're going out to the best coast, the West Coast. AFC West. I, come on. Can you bet against Mahomes, my homie? Right. Can, can, can you figure out a way to tell me right now that Mahomes is not going to win that division? If for some reason he dies and Travis Kelsey decides to go straight Swifty, uh, that's about it. Well, the only chance is maybe those terrorists that wanted to destroy the Taylor Swift concert goes to Arrowhead and in their attempt to kill Taylor Swift, they just kill everybody. That's the only chance. Um, and the, and yeah, that's that's basically it. Mahomes, it, this is Mahomes, and it's Mahomes. Uh, the entire AFC goes through Mahomes right now, not West. It's pretty clear, it's going to be the Chiefs. I don't think anybody can. Uh, if, the, if anybody says otherwise, they're just lying to you, and they're too way too into the sauce. Yeah, they're way too into their never, never do your own stash. So, um, are you telling me that you're not picking your Broncos to beat Mahomes? I, I'm not picking my number Broncos this year. I do, I will say this. Bo Nix, man, I like that boy. He he's got some good stuff. He can move. He's making great passes. He's 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 pass first, run second. I like what he's doing. I I I'm a Bo Nix fan. Bo Nix all the way, but they do not have many. If many Bo cool. Nix becomes a superstar, are we gonna see Bo Nose commercials? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, you gotta get pump. You be superstar first, and then if you can get Bo to say Bo Nose. And he's, and he's talking about Bo Nix. That's the only way you can do it because you cannot self-call yourself Bo. You have to let Bo call you that. And I don't know if he'll ever do that. That's marketing. Um, money talks, AFC baby. Money South. talks. Money talks, right? Oh, that's true. AFC South. The Texans by default? Yes. I mean, But again, though, the Texans are a great team. CJ Stroud, a uh, hell of a quarterback, what he's done there, that, that turnaround. Now, at the same time, I do think there's going to be a little punch in the face. I don't think they're going to be the same team that they were last year. I don't think they're going to surprise people. I think people are going to figure out how to answer C.J. Stroud and, and what that whole offense has done. But I still think they're going to be a really good team. My money is on the Texans. But the, the Jaguars, man, again, like they're, they're a pretty dang good team. They're not like great. I think the, the Texans have more pieces there. So I'm going to go uh, Texans. Okay. How many teams make the playoffs? Is it six? Yeah, it's six. It's the three division winners and then three wild card teams. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go here, right here. I'm gonna go my wild card teams. I've already told you my two. I'm actually going Ravens and Jets. 
Just okay. scary to think. Uh, you have already mentioned that the Ravens are going to make the playoffs. Yep. Uh, you've got a couple teams that you have not mentioned the Bills yet. Who is your second wild card team for the AFC? So my second wild card team is going to be the Miami Dolphins. What? You yeah. hate the Bills that much? I just think the the loss of uh, of Diggs over there, the turmoil that's been going on with the Bills. I think they're going to take a step back this year. I think you're crazy. No, listen. But you're an AFC junkie, and you just hate the Bills. So I get it. Like this was the same thing. You would have picked the the Patriots to not make the playoffs. No, so I I, I, I don't it. actually have a problem with the Bills. I really like Josh Allen as a quarterback. I just don't see it coming for them this year. Okay, I, I say. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. I just don't see anybody really being that much better. That's the thing about it. I don't think the Dolphins are that much better. And I think at the end of the day, great quarterback with Josh Allen. I think he ends up pulling it out. So my third wild card team is going to be Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Nice. Trevor Lawrence is a stud. We we're talking about him. I, the Jaguars are a good team, really good team. I, I'm having a hard time not picking them. Uh, Jaguars, it, to me, it's a Jaguars or Browns. Really, at this point, my problem though is Browns. Like you get the Bengals, you get the Ravens. If for some reason the Bengals, the Ravens can and figure out ways to sweep you, you get, that's that's going to make your season really tough. And but all those games are going to be tough. The, the Bengals don't play well against the Browns, especially in Cleveland. So it's either taking three AFC East or three uh, North. I'm going to go with the Browns. I think the Cleveland Browns will figure out a way to make the playoffs which is crazy for to say this is nuts the, the afc is very top heavy yeah <laughs> and then i think a lot of decent i think there's a lot more decent teams in the afc but i think they're very top heavy where the nfc has a lot more of that that like good but very little great in the nfc very little great i mean you got a couple teams there one or two there but but yeah. that's about it ravens jets browns will be my wild card picks james the NFC, so we're gonna go. Let's go. Um, let's go NFC West. Yeah, I struggled with this one a little bit, uh, but ultimately, I'm going to go with the 49ers. You know, Brock Purdy keeps going. Uh, you got Christian McCaffrey. It, I, there's no reason why they shouldn't win that division. Who else was your pick? The Rams. Actually, I have a team in the Cardinals that I think are really going to surprise some people this year. I could see the 49ers taking a little step back and the Cardinals surprising a lot of teams. I don't want to destroy you here right now. We'll wait uh, until the, towards the end. Let's see. Let's see if you even have, if you have them making the playoffs, let's have a conversation about this because I am down here in Arizona Cardinal land and there's a lot to talk about. I'm going to take the 49ers. I think it's clear. I think they're, they're one of the, if not the best team in the NFC. I, I think they're just running away. Even if they take a step back, where do they take a step back from, right? The Super Bowl. Yeah. So the, the <laughs> NFC championship. I'm going to go with 49ers. I think it's clear that just too many good players and Brock Purdy, which is just a great game controller, like just just ball handler, all that stuff. Good footballer. Um, and I like the guy. And JD trains with his uh, with his quarterback coach. Oh, so cool. cool. Yeah. So I, I remember when he got drafted, he's like, dude, watch out for this Purdy guy. I know he's the last pick, but watch out. This gets good. And then you get, uh, what was it, Garoppolo got hurt. Then you had... Um, Trey Lance get hurt, then right Purdy starts. Like, what? What? Yeah. And then he's just just carving up the league. Anyways, and by the way, for the for those of you who don't know, when David mentions JD, that's his youngest son, the blonde haired, good looking superstar that will be one day quarterback, third baseman, maybe my, pitcher one day. My future client that has already promised me twenty percent. Yes, he did, and that's and we need to renegotiate. Um, put it on paper, James. All right, NFC South. <laughs> Atlanta is the best of the crap. Yes, yes. God, like that's the thing too. Is they are they're just the best of the crap. But again, like the Bucks and Falcons. I mean, they're going to be competitors. They're 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 both of them are a team that you cannot overlook. They're going to fight. Um, I don't think they're on an upper tier of anything, and I still think the Falcons had the worst NFL draft of all time with what they're. You know, I think Penix is actually a really good player, but but I'm like what? <laughs> Anyways, Kirk Cousins and him. I don't. I still don't understand all of that. The whole like I don't know if anybody. Well, that's a documentary just waiting to happen. Uh, but I'm also going to go with the Falcons. 
So, but kind of boring picks there. We're just not going to really talk about more. The, the Maybe one of the more fun divisions in all of football, too, the NFC North. You know me, hard knocks. I'm still on the Lions. You know, give me, I'm on Raw St. James and, and just let's go. Lions, you're not going to go with, are you with some, some love, some of the biggest contract in NFL history. Nope. Nope. No, nope. good call. Because I, I don't, I'm not buying in. I don't see it. I don't see it. The dude had won some games. I don't see. It. I think the contract team came to her. I don't understand it. I'm not in the, the Kevin Love train. I am far away from that Kevin Love train. I might be crazy, but I am. I'm all about the Lions. I think they built a very good team, a good core, and they're just trucking along. I think they're getting better and a good culture and great culture. Absolutely incredible culture. And I think they've. I, I think they might take a little step back again. There might be a little bit of a growing pain there of like second year type of thing. At the same time, I. I and then a lot of it, a lot of times people think they take teams take tough step backs. I actually don't think they do. I think they just play harder schedules because <laughs> they're going to have the probably what I, I don't, I haven't seen it, but probably the second hardest schedule on it, all of the, all of the NFC because they're, they're the second team in the NFC last year was in the, losing in the playoffs, losing in the championship game. So it's going to be one of those interesting things. I, I will, I do have to say this. I do think that bears offense is going to surprise people. That defense is good. Defense is a top 10 defense. And the Bears offense, anytime though, when you're looking at DJ Moore, you're looking at Keenan Allen, like on the same offense. And then you have somebody that can, if as long as Williams can give him the ball, like that's that's a solid offense, no matter what, just right there. Now you got to worry about line and all that fun stuff and keep your quarterback healthy because if he's not, and if he doesn't deliver, that's going to be a pretty bad offense. Now we're going to jump to probably the best if not the, the second best, I would say the best division of football, at least the best like two teams t- together in one division, the NFC East. Give me Saquon Barkley and the Philadelphia Eagles to take that division. What do you think of the Cowboys? Well, as of right now, they don't have a wide receiver, and I always thought that their quarterback was extremely overrated. So, you know, they're a good team, not a great team. Let's see what happens with C.D. Lamb. You know how... A lot of times when these guys hold out, you, it takes them a while to get into the groove. So I can see them starting off 0-2 and, and then, you know, making a late run to try to win that division. Because I don't think Philadelphia is all that good either, to tell you the truth. I just think they're a good team. I don't think they're a great team. And you heard a lot of a lot of noise about, you know, the quarterback and the head coach in Philadelphia not being on the same page. But I think they're going to get over that. I think they have too much talent on that team. So for me, it's, yeah, I'll put Dallas in as a wild card if you want me to jump the gun a little bit. Uh, I don't think they that the Cowboys can win the division, though. Cowboys will see the, out of good teams in the NFL, they're going to see the Browns, the Ravens, obviously Giants, but Lions. They'll see the 49ers, Falcons, Texans, the Bengals. That'll be a home game against the Bengals, so good for them. Bucks will be obviously some competition. So they've got some teams. I mean, they got some teams. They got some, you know, it's not going to be the easiest schedule in the world. Um, I do think the Eagles, I actually think the Eagles are elite. I think the Eagles are really, really, really good. San Juan getting over there, I think that's going to be a, a style of offense a little bit more, a little bit more to his style. I think it's going to save him a little bit. I think it's going to allow him to move more and be athletic versus kind of ground and pound. What the Giants needed him without an O-line, without a QB, they could just kind of queue up on San Juan and hurt him. I think they're going to allow him to open up. He is a ground and pound kind of looking guy, but he can move a lot better than that. And so it's going to be really interesting. But I think this is the Eagles' um, division uh, to win. I do think the Cowboys at the end of the day are going to be a really good team. And then They're going to do what Dak does, make him super competitive, Every single game, they're going to be in it. They're going to blow some teams away. You're going to see a couple losses. You're like, what? What is that? But that's not really going to be on him. It's going to be on the defense a lot more. Yep. And then it, kind of like Tony Romo, same thing, like offense. Like he's going to just kind of carry the team. And then when it comes down to it in the playoffs, you're just going to see it because uh, they're going to face a good team and they're not going to be built for that. So we're going to go wild card. We have not touched it all on our wild cards on the NFC side. James, we get apparently we get three. Uh, I didn't know that. I thought we got two like baseball style. We're going to go for three. Oh, no, two. God, now baseball's now three, two. God, but we, but we only get three divisions. It's a, whatever. We only six in baseball. We get seven in the NFL because they just want to give you an extra one. Yeah. James, by the way, commissioners, greedy assholes, stop with the yeah. wild cards. There's too many of them. It, stop. Do not become the, the, the basketball. Don't do it. Don't do. Don't become the NBA. 
because yeah. no one likes that. The like, only time that all these playoff teams works is in the NHL. But yeah, anyway. I mean, why is that? Because they haven't. I mean, that's just kind of been like solid, and it's great. It's been like that for a long time, and the NHL is just the playoffs are awesome, and you just want them to go long. That's all. I think that I think to get on off to, off topic here, the NHL it was never a big deal. It's not like yeah, they made the playoffs that that coach puts it in his hat to where. Every other sport, it was like, cool, like you made the playoffs. That's something that the, the manager can always say he did. Yeah. The NHL was like, no, that's not quite good enough. Like, uh, you know, and now you're making these other teams ho hum making the playoffs. Like, NBA, like, no one cares now that you made the playoffs. It's like nobody even gives a crap. So don't do that in the NFL. Make it exclusive, make yeah. the group exclusive. All right. So, NFC James, you get three wildcard teams. Um, we already have your picks. You're, I, I believe we're on the same page here. 49ers, Falcons, Lions, and Eagles. So you can't pick those teams. <laughs> pick three others. So I've got the Cowboys. Okay. Uh, unlike you, I am a believer in Jordan Love. I don't like the contract that they gave him, but I will give the Packers a wild card, and I am going to give the Arizona Cardinals the final wild card. I don't know why. I just you have did. a hunch. I like Kyler Murray. I think he's a good quarterback, and I think he's going to make a big jump this year. Do you think Kyler Murray's actually ever looked at video? I don't know if Kyler Murray can spell video, but I think he's a smart has. guy. He's a very smart guy. He's, I mean, again, he was a baseball first rounder. He has to be pretty smart. Yeah, not from the experience I have with baseball first rounders, especially one in particular. Uh, no, I, I, I've never heard anything otherwise. I actually think he's a very smart guy. I, I, he does not give a crap about football. I haven't seen a single thing that he actually puts on a second level where he shows up early, works hard. Oh, you're going to hear things. Oh, he's working harder, all this stuff. Yeah, but working harder right now is getting to, to below average right. for him. He doesn't work. look at video. They had to put a co- in his contract to watch video. The only other player I've ever heard that is Johnny Manziel. Wait, what are they talking about? They don't watch video. Like, I'm sorry. that is You are piss poor, and you just sit back on athleticism. Yeah, he can move around. But at the end of the day, what the, his problem is, is whenever pressure gets on him, he, always, he tries to do everything and becomes Superman, and he's not. He's not. And he doesn't have the tools around him. Defense is going to be piss poor. Piss poor. Offense is like there's no real tools around him. And I'm sorry, dude. You're going to be so – they're going to be a top five pick in the NFL draft next year. Okay, how about this? We have to make a weighted bet because obviously it's going to be harder. I'm picking the Cardinals versus the field. You've got the field. Yes. So how about this? If the Cardinals make the playoffs, you give me that Bryce Harper baseball I've been trying to get off you for years. And no, you're not giving me Brad Ziegler. <laughs> really got Ziegler too. Uh, yeah, I know because you thought you had two Bryce Harpers and you gave me Brad Ziegler, but I let you keep the Ziegler because you only have one. Uh, and if you win, I will send you an awesome Ichiro card for next year when we go to the Hall of Fame and you can have Ichiro sign it for you. I just bought an Otani rookie card that also has Ichiro on it. So you can get Ichiro to sign that, and it'll be super valuable, super awesome. Can we like over over videos? Uh, there you go, done. There you go. Yes, locked in. Um, I love it. I will give you that Harper ball is gonna be a tough one though to give up. Hopefully, I have two. Hopefully, I can find another one somewhere. I'm like, ooh, I have another nice Harper ball. <laughs> hey, listen, um, I didn't ask you for your Aaron Judge bat. I know that's what Yolanda right. wants. The, the game use Aaron Judge bat or the game use Manny Ramirez home run five hundred bat. What? 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 No, he broke a 500 home run club. I think it was like 498 or something like that. that okay, because if you had his 500th bat, I would have lost it that I didn't know about that all this time. Yeah, I, I think it was like 498 or something like that. And then he wrote, but he, but it, but when he gave it to me, he had just hit his 500 home run. That's still pretty cool. He didn't cool. write 500 home run bat, but right, it says 500 right. home run club. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty good one. All right. Cardinals. Okay, wait, so you have Cowboys, Cardinals, and Packers, and Packers. Cowboys, Cardinals, Packers. I think it's Cowboys for sure. Um, Packers are an interesting team. I obviously a very good team. Buccaneers to me, I think they're going to have the advantage of having a ho hum schedule and be able to pull something out. It, it's just always hard picking the last couple teams, you know. And you're just like, eh, like, eh. So I'm going to sit here and say 
I, I got to take the Cowboys. I'm going to take the Buccaneers. And I'm going to take... How about this? I will go out on a limb for you. I'm going to take the Chicago Bears. <laughs> okay. All right. Everybody I, who's I'm watching this video... Just to go for it, I'm going uh, just to 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 two things to to match your Cardinals pick and to beat your Packers. <laughs> All right, everybody who's watching this video, please let me know what is more likely: the Cardinals making the playoffs or the Bears. <laughs> oh God, that's so bad. So I'm taking the Buccaneers, Bears, and Cowboys. Uh, yeah, let us know which one's more outlandish. So we're gonna go right to it, James. Who's gonna win the AFC? That would be your New York Jets. <laughs> okay, here's here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have to put money on this. Okay. Oh God. Ten bucks. That's fine. Ten bucks on your Jets. I'm gonna take ten bucks on JD's Bengals. Can we do what you did with your son a couple of years ago? If the Jets make the Super Bowl, Uncle David, can you bring me to the Super Bowl? Where is the Super Bowl? I don't know, but I'll go to Alaska to watch the Jets in the Super Bowl. <laughs> we got to look this up here super bowl it's gonna it's gonna be either in like new orleans or miami or yeah new orleans yeah, yeah you I'm and i can't have a good time in new orleans yeah, yeah we, oh, the logo's sick by the way so if you don't know a couple of years ago uh when the Bengals went to the super bowl before the season started david's son jd asked if they made the Super Bowl if Daddy would take him to the Super Bowl. And David ended up spending, what was it, 15 grand a ticket? It is 15 total. Okay. So if the Jets make the Super Bowl, will you take me to the Super Bowl? Oh, to New Orleans? To New Orleans? No. Just, just pay for the Super, the Super Bowl ticket. I'll pay for everything else. If the Jets else. win the AFC, I will take you to the Super Bowl, James. Wow, you heard it here first. Now I am rooting for a Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. If the Bengals win the Super Bowl, will you take me to the Super Bowl? If the Bengals win? No, absolutely okay. not. <laughs> but, all right, so James, you have the Jets. <laughs> okay, I have the Bengals. I do think the Jets will make the playoffs. And if you're in, you're in. Uh, at the end of the day, that's, that's all that matters. Once you're in, you have a chance. Uh, yep. I'm gonna take the Bengals. I, I do think it's probably the Chiefs to lose, but the Bengals, I, I, man, when the Bengals are healthy, they've got the Chiefs number. No matter what, Travis Kelsey will try to change history, <laughs> dude. That is that is Burrowhead, because <laughs> Joe Burrows owns the Chiefs in that stadium when he's healthy, and all that stuff. I there's no it's just the numbers. You can't lie to it, and so we'll see though. We'll see how it at the end of the day. Him and Jamar Chase, I think, about to go off. NFC side, where do you, what do you got? Give me the Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions, so close last year. So close, but yet so far away. Uh, I, I, I got to put my boy Brock. I think that that team is hungry. They're angry. They're, that is exactly how you become a great team, is losing the Super Bowl the way they did uh, and become better because they just, they're, just, they're not losing anything. I don't think they. I don't think they're going to take a step back. I think that was a team primed to take a step forward, and they just needed a QB to do it, and they finally have it. They have all the pieces. I'm going to go with the 49ers. So I've got a mat matchup, a rematch of what was this? The 1980 what, like six Super Bowl or something like that? 83 Super Bowl, something like that, old man. The 49ers versus the Bengals. Who do you have in your Jets versus Lions pick? Who do you think? It's our year. Time for the Jets to win a Super Bowl, damn it. And it's time for you to pay for the Super Bowl tickets. Um, so you're going to take the Jets over the Lions. You're writing this all down. You got this all right. We're going to put this on the screen. Whatever. You're, you're crazy. Um, I am going to take, I've got the 49ers Bengals. I think it's the Bengals here. Going for the Bengals. This is a rematch of Super Bowl 19, I think I'm reading it. 16, 19, 1989 at Joe Robbie Stadium. 20 to 16. The 49ers beat the Bengals. I'm going to I am going to have the Bengals beating the Niners. So if the Bungles go to the Super Bowl, are you going again with JD? I'm gonna say this. So so this is what my financial manager told me when I told him I'm having to buy tickets to the Super Bowl. He said, You're an idiot. First of all, that's the first thing he said. He goes, tell me before you do this. And I said, why? He goes, you put enough money down on the Bengals before the season. And if you win, you know, then you, that pays for the trip. 
and so I am going to do it differently. Like, I'll, but at the same time, the the year before they were like three and twelve or something like that, three and fourteen. And so I don't know what the what the record was. And then that's when I made the bet. I'm like, oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> I'm not going to play the Super Bowl. Uh, so I'm going to put some money down on the Bengals going to the Super Bowl to enough to pay for the trip. You better put some money on the Jets, my brother. You better put some money on the Jets. Why? I'm not paying for the tickets. So put them down on the Bengals. You put them down on the Jets. Okay. We'll talk about it. But you heard it here first, okay? I've got the Bengals winning Super Bowl over the 49ers. James has the Jets in an incredible surprise. Uh, Joe Namath-style run with Aaron Rodgers saying, screw the clouds, screw COVID. We're going to the Super Bowl. We're winning this damn thing in New Orleans over the Lions. Yep. Tell us how you're crazy because you're crazy. Nothing new. <laughs> Nothing new. Um, but you know me. Speaking, I'm a New York sports junkie. You know New I love New York, New York sports junkie. And New York sports is what we talk about on here. Baseball particularly. Aaron Judge. Uh, the other day, they were, <laughs> they were marking Aaron Judge as, as the great Bambino, Bambino. The already Hall of Fame Aaron Judge. Um, James, is Aaron Judge already a Hall of Famer? No. Absolutely no. not. Not even close. And I am going to make the perfect case for this. Who compares the best to Aaron Judge? Who compares the best to Aaron Judge? So for me, I mean, at this point, you're already you're always so good at this. It's finding finding guys. I mean, I would say Prince Fielder would have been is really an interesting one to me. Um, but I don't think Prince Fielder was as good of an all round baseball player as Aaron Judge. Uh, I mean, to me, Bryce Harper, I think, is a very interesting combination. I think Bryce Harper, again, is an all-around, a little bit more of an all-around baseball player, but doesn't have as high of a ceiling on, like, power and stuff as Judge. Who do you got? I sent you an email the other day. And on on that email, I want you to pull up the head-to-head stats for their first, uh, what was it, nine years? Let me just double-check. It's any from their 24 to age 32 age. This is the best comp I've ever seen. Ryan Howard versus Aaron Judge. Is Ryan Howard a Hall of Famer? No. He, Ryan Howard is not a Hall of Famer. Hall of Very Good. Hall of Very Good. Now take a look at their numbers the same time. From 24 to 32. Ooh. Now the war is crazy different because of the defensive abilities of Aaron Judge. Right? He, That's why... I, I, I'm looking at that like, Jesus, that jumps out. 18 to 50? Yeah. It's, that's not even close. No, it's it's massive difference. But look at the rest of the numbers. I, but that's my problem, though. Ryan Howard wasn't a bad defender. Ryan Howard wasn't bad, like, at all. Yeah, I know. But when you're at first base, you don't get the extra war but numbers. I think such bullshit. Because I, it's like, I, I agree, which I, is why I don't put a lot of stock into war. But you take a look. Ryan Howard played more games... 1098 to 958 and, and granted this is there's still 40 games in the season uh or so at this point um so but played appearances 4701 to 4169 1100 hits to 991 judge has 991 300 home runs for ryan howard and currently as we're speaking 301 for aaron judge RBIs, 920 for Ryan Howard, 683 for Judge. And then you look at the rest of the numbers. They're all very comparable. Now, when you get to like the OPS stuff, OPS Plus, which is ridiculous, mm-hmm. that that he is 71% better basically than the rest of the league versus 35% for Ryan Howard. You know what I'm looking at? Doubles. Ryan Howard has 200 doubles compared to 166. I would have never guessed that. Would have never guessed that at all. And Aaron Judge is grounded into more double plays than Ryan Howard, which shocks me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, well. But again, it's all comparable. You want to know, know how, why, though, too? Day and age where we they can't take out the second baseman. You, you don't have Chase Utley and, yeah. and guys taking out the second baseman the way we used to. It used to be a lot harder to turn a double play. Right. But, again, their numbers are so comparable. And then you look at the fact that Aaron Judge is turning 32, and usually that's when guys start falling off, just like it did with Ryan Howard. And I'm not taking away anything from Aaron Judge. He's an amazing player. But he's got 
time going against him right now. And with a guy who's had a, a, a certain injury history, you can't guarantee that he's going to stay healthy. So if he's going to drop off because of age and injuries are going to be a problem potentially, he's not a Hall of Famer yet if the trajectory goes the same way it did for Ryan Howard. I know you're not a big war fan, but him and Bryce Harper have the same war right now for their career. Okay. Uh, uh, Jose Ramirez has actually more, has a, a slightly higher war than uh, than he does. Torrey Hunter has more. I'm trying to think like Altuve, but Altuve's got like a couple more seasons. Chris Sale. It's really interesting. Nolan Arenado, Machado. But he's going to catch these guys. That's the problem. Is like all these guys, you know, if he keeps this going on his pace, he might catch Arenado like this year. Yeah, but this pace is unreasonable. It's not likely that he can continue this pace for five more years. What, but what if he just continues it for one more year? Right? Again. One more year puts him at three. Let's just, let's just say a round number, 350. Okay. That's a, a, a reasonable number. Next year, if he gets... 10 more home, run, home but, runs this year. He's at 340 or But that's not what you asked me. You asked me, is he a Hall of Famer right now? And right now, no, is he yeah. a Hall of Famer? Right now, no. That's the thing about it is no. And I, that's the only thing I hate about this. I hate, and this is the only market we do it in, is New York. You throw these labels on guys, and, and you and you put it, and and you just want everybody to have the shock reaction. And he's a Hall of Famer because he's a Yankee, and he's he hit sixty one home runs. He's a Yankee, and this is this is this is. If he was a if he was a Marlin and he did that, you wouldn't even be having this conversation. You'd be like, hey, okay, is he going to be a Hall of Famer? Yeah. And you sit there and go, yeah, the pace of it, and all this stuff, I guess. But you're like, oh, he's a Yankee. That means more. No, it doesn't. It does not mean more. And that's the only problem is like you get all these people in your backyard constantly telling you how it means more. And these guys end up becoming Hall of Famers that are like, okay, like they were good. But if you put a Padres uniform on him, he wouldn't be a Hall of Famer yeah. yet. I think there's two guys in New York right now that are more likely to be Hall of Famers. And that Ooh. would be Garrett Cole and Francisco Lindor. Ooh. No. No? Cole, yes. Cole is going to be interesting. No. Problem is Cole's gonna be so far away on some of those big numbers, and now, but that's that Cole's gonna be one of the first guys that you're gonna sit back and go, ooh, like, what's the best? What is a Hall of Fame pitcher now? And we're gonna have a really hard time defining yeah. that. He's not gonna be the first one, but there's gonna be because there's gonna be some guys now that are gonna be retiring in the next couple of years and stuff like that. We're gonna be like, like, like even Felix is an interesting conversation. He's not a Hall of Famer, no, but you're like, dude, there was a stretch there where he was the best pitcher in baseball by far. And, and he pitched for a while. He just doesn't have those crazy numbers. We're still comparing pitcher numbers to these numbers back in the day that, that are now unreasonable. And that's what's going to stop a guy like, like him from being a Hall of Famer. And Garrett Cole's going to be the same thing. We're going to sit back and go, ooh, like, he's not Greg Maddox. But they're going to be in the same Hall of Fame. You know, and that's going to be, it's going to be a really interesting judge. To, to, it's going to be interesting to judge. Now, to talk about judge, though, to say he's a Hall of Famer now is you're stupid. Yeah. I'm sorry. If he... If he stopped baseball right now, he is not a Hall of Famer. He is going to be an interesting argument about like how great he was for a couple of great seasons. And I need more longevity out of this. I need Absolutely. to see in a couple of years. I think Giancarlo Stanton is more is is going to be a lot. If if Judge Judge retired right now and Stanton retired right now, you would have a very interesting conversation between those two. Oh, I think you're crazy. Let's put up those numbers. We can pull it up another time because we still have a few things that we want to discuss. But I, Giancarlo Stanton has been dominant for one season in his career. Aaron Judge has been dominant for way more seasons. Anyway, do you think that Aaron Judge is going to hit 500 home runs? I do. You do? I do. I think he, uh, again, the, the thing is, is even if he goes off of this pace, even if for some reason he falls completely off and he's a 25 home run hitter that's a, that's that's a 10 years okay that's a lot i don't think he can do that but like next year he hits 40 you know then he hits he hits four 35 like at that pace he's got to average hit it. he's got to average 30 home runs for the next seven seasons that puts him to 39 years old i think the problem is he's gonna he's gonna double that <laughs> one year he might hit 60 next year again right he but i can see 50. him hitting he 15. 50 so that but that knocks him down that knocks down that back number so far that 
then he hits 40 that knocks it down again and and that's my thing about it is i don't i i don't think 40 and stuff is is that far out of the realm again for a couple of years in a row I don't think it's that far out of the realm. It's going to be very close, but I don't think it's a guarantee that he's going to hit 500 home runs. I just don't. I don't and think this I, season I, a Mets. I, and by the way, I'm not a Mets fan who has sour grapes against Aaron Judge. If you know me or if you've watched me or spoken to me for years, you know that I am not that guy that's going to belittle someone because they're on a team that I don't particularly like. Um, Aaron Judge, he just started way too late in his career for me to believe that he's going to reach these milestones. And with his size and his potential injury history, if you told me that they're going to move him to first base next year or have him start DHing a lot sooner, maybe. But right now, with being in the outfield, running, you know, that's a lot of wear and tear on knees of a really tall guy. It's going to be tough. G. Carl Sand, 422 home runs right now. He's two years older. He's on a higher pace. Okay, but right, I don't... like it starts getting interesting. Like he just needs to just survive. Yeah. If he hits twenty, he has three more years. Three more years. Like if he hits twenty-five, like he's a Hall of Famer. Like he's five hundred home runs. <laughs> like he could become the first Hall of Fame, uh, first player with five hundred home runs that doesn't get into the Hall of Fame. That's how mediocre I think he is. Well, there's a couple others already. That are not in, James. No, there's a couple. Really? There's, there's, there's a couple guys that have 500 home runs that are not in. Well, non-steroid <laughs> guys. Well, yeah, I would say that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because Palmero, McGuire, Sosa, Bonds. Who else? And Palmero, he just had good wood because he not only steroids, but the Viagra. So, you know, it had a combination. He was ahead of it. He was ahead of the game. Yeah. That's not bad. No. <laughs> hey, if you're out there and you're watching, again, I tell you every week, tell your friends, tell you, tell your buddies, sit out there, leave us comments, like us, don't like us, tell us why you don't like us, and, and James will take the blunt of it because that's really probably why you don't like us. But hit that subscribe, hit that like button, let everybody know, and uh, yeah, we'll be here uh, for the next show.